I hope your day is full of trucks and bicycles and motorcycles and scooters and um, taxis, buses, trains. It's a transportation intro. You're fucking welcome. The wheels on the bus, they do go round and round. Guys, we have an amazing episode of Shank for you this week with the one, the only, Gabby Lamb. It's super funny, but before we get into this week's episode of Shank with Gabby Lamb, just a few things I want to tell you about. First of all, I am coming to San Diego with Kim Congdon. That's March 19th at uh, Mic Drop Comedy in San Diego. We're co-headlining. If you're in LA, I'm going to be at the Improv tomorrow. I'm going to be at Supernova Comedy on February 14th. If you're a sad Valentine's Day person and you want to forget it's Valentine's Day, come out to Supernova. It's going to be very fun. And Kim Congdon's on the show as well. Uh, if you want more me, Go to patreon.com, patreon.com slash Sarah Weinchank. Behind the scenes videos you're not getting on Instagram. Crazy photos you're not getting on Instagram. Uh, You get this bitch podcast a week early and so much more. Uh, Look down at your feet right now. Are you wearing socks? If you're not wearing socks, ask yourself why, you dirty little piggy. Get some socks on those toes. It's 2023. Toes are a form of currency. Cover up those tootsies. Keep them safe. Keep them warm. Go to ohyeah.com. That's three O's, H-Y-E-A-H.com. Discount code Sarah, S-A-R-A-10 for 10% off unique sock designs. Whether you're into aliens or trees or Bob Ross, there's a pair of socks for you. Okay, guys, let's get into this week's episode of Shank with the one, the only, Gabby Lamb. Here it is. Should I face more towards this way? I think you're fine, right? Am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're good. You're, you're good. good. It's got you. We got you. Got real nervous. You got real nervous. <laughs> she's so, a professional, everyone. She's so nervous. One thing about Gabby Lamb is she's a professional podcaster. And she's a professional podcaster. And if there's one thing that's that's true, it's that that's true. That that's true. Okay, it's the return of one of my favorite people, Gabby Lamb. Is this uh, my 47th time on here? This is probably your 47th time on here. <laughs> First time in studio? First time. We've done, we've studio gone. Studio pods y- a long time ago. We've gone in and out of studios. We're I drifters. Like. We're we, drifters. We, we move around with the wind. And I'm sure we'll be back in Topanga soon enough. Soon enough. And then one day we'll be back in another studio. I love that. Yeah, I'm a traveling. She's, yeah, <laughs> she's pulling geographics. I am. I'm pulling, yeah. I'm pulling geographics. What's going on in the Gabby Lamb universe? What, girl, oh, fucking whatever is going on. Same shit. It's, Every time I look at your Instagram, it's so funny. Is it? Because I'm shadow banned. I'm always so shadow banned. My mom, Can you find me? My mom follows you. Does she, she really? Goes, she goes, that Gabby Lamb. So funny. Does she really? Yeah, she does. And she goes, when she does, when she goes on her dad's Facebook and she pulls up her dad's Facebook they post. Love, people love that. My mom loves that. Yeah. My mom was talking about you at the dinner table to my dad. She's like, when's Gabby coming back on the <laughs> podcast? I was like, What's your mom's name? Debbie. Debbie. I love that. And I love Debbie. Uh, Debbie. Does she watch your podcast? Uh, depends. Sometimes she'll listen and then I'll say something like dick, yeah, pussy, like that. asshole, yeah. all those things. Yeah. The, I don't the know. The classics. The classics. I'm like, uh, I think it's kind of embarrassing. I don't think she listens. Yeah. She listens to some episodes. Moms don't like to hear us talk like that. No, but it's also like, if I had a daughter, would I care? See, and the thing is, is will we even know until we have daughters? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't like that you're talking about your vagina right, on your podcast, yeah. Sarah. Well, we talk so about cool. it. Like, I'm like, yeah, it sounds great. Like, who cares? And then I think about if I had a daughter and she was like, yeah, I like when guys come in my fucking pussy, I'd be like, maybe don't say that. Right. Maybe. Not for, not for your mommy. Not for your mommy. Not for your mommy. And it's also like, if she did like that, that would make her a bad mom. Right? right. If she was right. like, I love it when you're talking about getting jizzed in. I'd yeah. be like, keep uh, going, keep going. Yeah, like, <laughs> Mommy raised you right. Uh, yeah. yeah. That would be weird. Yeah. See, what's weird is that my dad likes it when I talk about that stuff. And I'm like, well, you got to relax. Yes. Yeah, st- you're not my audience. Yeah. No. <laughs> Does he listen? He sometimes does, but he loves my stand up. And I'm like, you're fine. You got to get out. My mom will walk out of the room. She won't come to my shows. And if she does, she leaves. But my dad, uh, my dad fucking front row just, yes, making eye contact no, with me. No. Loves it. Does your dad ever pitch you jokes? Or your mom? Sort of. They both kind of do. They both kind of do, it, and they're equally horrific. And you're like, oh, yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah, really funny. Uh, my mom has an ongoing <laughs> bit where she's like, you got to talk about 
the the sample people at Costco. And I'm like, I'm not <laughs> literally, I'm like, I don't do comedy for fucking virgins. Come on. You gotta talk about the sample people. A Kirkland signature, the Kirkland signature sample people. That's so fucking funny. You, you know, then you take the fucking bit. Cause I don't want, oh. I, don't, I, won't, I won't touch it. She's, that's what she's obsessed with. Talk about Costco. Yeah, sometimes it's also just like embarrassing. Do you hide your stories from your mom ever? Not only do I hide them, I have her blocked. No. I had her hidden from my stories for a long, long time. So she still loves you. She still loves me. <laughs> so, because she's I'm trying blocked. to keep her to still love me. You know, that's why same, I have her blocked. Yeah. Same. I'm like, this is for you, not for me. Exactly. You're not my audience. You're not my audience. You're my mom. Right. So that's it. I'm a, an artist. You're an artist. Your mom is your mom. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. Do you remember? I remember when I was little. I couldn't imagine my mom existing before I did. Like, I was just like, there's no way. Like, in my head when I was little, I was like, mm -hmm. my mom was born a fully formed woman just <laughs> so I could be born. Like, I could not imagine. I couldn't fathom her being any younger than like what she was. I was like, no, she's just literally always, she's only ever existed to be a mom. That, that was it. She that was is, it is. I would love to go back in time. I'm mm -hmm. taking a time machine. I'm seeing what Steve and Debbie are doing in the 60s. Yeah, you are. Nothing's nothing good. How old are they? My, now. Da my dad is 71. So our parents, okay. My mom is 61. So we have, our parents are about probably the same age. Yeah. Yeah. So. Boomers. Boomers for love sure. Yeah, love our boomer parents. Um, Do both your parents have iPhones? Yeah. And I, I don't know. I don't think that they know how to use them. Yeah, same. Yeah, I don't think they understand. Are either of your parents artistic? My dad is. My dad's super artistic. What does he do? like? He's a painter. Oh, he he's is? He's an animator, yeah. So he's an artist. Oh. My mom is uh, horrifically unartistically inclined. But your mom's a teacher, right? She's a teacher, yeah. She's always, I like I like seeing on your stories. Your mom's funny, too. Yeah, she you is You guys are funny. funny together. She's a funny bitch. They're both, they're both very funny. It's interesting when your parents are funny too. Cause I'm, sometimes right? I'm like, they're funnier than me. Like they're just naturally really funny. Yeah. My parents are funnier than me. They're ki they kill. Yeah. Oh, kill. Yeah. I, I was like, I wish they're killing, but also embarrassing sometimes. Well, embarrassing cause they're your parents. But if they weren't your parents, you'd be, you could admire them. I'd be them like, they're being, great. Right. You could admire them. They're for comedic being funny geniuses. Individuals. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, that's my dad. Yeah. When yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. They, they are funny. I have, I have funny parents. They have a funny dynamic too. So they get along? They do. Well, not when they were married, but they do now. Now That's they're cool. friends. Yeah. That's cool. What's yeah. going on with your um, your t-shirts? I see you airbrush in. I go on Instagram. I see Gabby. She's airbrushing, she's airbrushing. little satanic she's women I on t-shirts. She's, <laughs> she's airbrushing angels <laughs> on t-shirts. Oh, sorry, I have Thick COVID. bitches on yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, no worries, no worries. Yeah, yeah. I love finding out on the pod. Yeah, you no. know, I was like, keep it, keep it surprising. Keep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Now you've got it too. Fuck yeah. And you too. And everybody in this house. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't have it. Well, we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, I have. I've been teaching myself how to airbrush, and it's you know, is it fun? It is fun. It's hard. Do you like switching? Okay, this is this is a question because I can't paint or any of that shit. Yeah. I'll switch from like creative project to creative project. Like I'll be like, oh, right now I'm writing a horror thing, but then tomorrow I'll write a joke and I like switching it up. Cause then I feel like I can come back to the other thing and be more excited about it. Totally. Cause I took a break from the, from, from it originally. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Totally. Does, do you feel like switching between mediums affects your creativity totally. in a positive way? Yeah. Like you'll get, I'll get sick of airbrushing. Then I'll go back to like actually drawing and painting and then I went like, then I'll go to like using my iPad and I'll draw on that. And I'll, you know, you like oscillate yeah. between mediums because it, yeah, it helps you keep it fresh, helps you keep it fucking funky. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I you mean, know, cause you painted me those jeans and let me tell you. Yeah. The jeans. I was wearing these jeans in Texas. I was life at the fucking party. Were you life at the party? People were like, where did you get the jeans? Stop. Really? Yes. They were loving them. They were loving them. Now, see, you that them. makes me happy because everything I do, I look at it and I'm like, wow, you should kill yourself. Every, oh, that's so, every piece of art I create, I'm like, this is so ugly and fucking stupid. But do you also feel that way when you watch yourself podcast? I feel that way mostly when I watch my stand up back. Not so much my podcast. Podcast because it's more natural and fun. Exactly. And you're, like, yeah. you're like, I'm just being myself. Podcast. With, mm -hmm. with the stand up, I go, I'm sorry. Who put that nose on me? 
Hey, I'm when sorry. Did that, when did, did I get I a full hook nose? And uh, yeah. why am I being shot from the side like that? No. What's up with the double chin? Why did I say the word like that? See, you're talking purely aesthetically, right? I mean, I listen to myself and I'm like, you unfunny cunt. Like, no. I, I, no, I listen back and I'm like, I will never do this again. I will never. How do I do this? Why does anybody book me? I go like. Spiral. A spiral. I'm like, you are not. Who do you think you are? You know what I'll tell you had me spiraling recently? Yeah. I had a bomb. I had a bomb. Like, and it yeah. was like, because the longer you do it, you the bombs get less frequent. It's right? true. It's they true. They really do. But sometimes every once in a while you get hit with a bomb and you're like, holy shit. Didn't know I could I still do that. I didn't know I could bomb yeah. so hard. I've been doing yep. this for so long. It's And then you're like, this is actually the hardest career in the world. Yeah. You're yeah. like, just when you think you got it. No, you show yourself the old razzle dazzle. <laughs> you su- yeah, you surprise yourself with humiliation and pain. Humiliation and pain. Right. It's really, it's always there. The thing is, is like, even when I have a great set, I al- I never get too excited about it because I'm always like, I know what's around the corner and it's a Same. fucking bomb. And I and every show, this is why stand up is so hard is because with every show, it's a little bit unpredictable. It's You're, different. You just don't know. Like you just never really know what's going to happen. Someone could yell something. Oh yeah. You could forget something. The audience could be whack. I did a show the other night at the improv where it was like Bobby Lee, Andrew Santino, um, Melissa Villasenor, like, you know, fucking great, great cast, if you will. Yeah. And everybody got off stage and was like, I bombed. And sometimes it's, you just watch like the fucking pros just eat it too. And you're like, how is this happening? No, I know. How? It, it's also like, sometimes you want to know what throws me off the most. The most is when I get on stage and I say a joke that mm-hmm. works every time, Yep. every time, every time for five years, five years, tr- tried and true, sweetie. Yep. It's my emergency. Yeah, I'll pull this out. I know this is going to work. And yeah. then if it doesn't work, I, oh. I go, whoa, holy shit. <laughs> it's the worst. It's holy the worst. shit. What feeling. happened? What happened? It's the worst feeling. It's the most humbling career too. It really is. One day you could feel like you're like, I'm really doing something. The next day you're like, I'm never going to do anything. I'm not amounting to anything. Every single day is a new feeling of that. (laughs) What is that specifically comedy or is that just artists in general? I don't know. Cause I've never experienced anything else. (laughs) Like do doctors wake up and feel that way? I fucked up with that scalpel last night. Right. I hope not. Can you imagine? Now that would be a shitty career to feel like I could have performed that surgery better. I should have called him to see how he was doing. Now it's so? too late. What about like plastic surgeons? Do you think there? Of oh course, my god! There have to be surgeons who like look back at their work and they're like, "Can I tell you something?" Well, yeah. Speaking of plastic surgeons, Please. okay. So Kim and I were gonna collaborate with this plastic surgeon. She was like thinking about possibly buying ads on our podcast right okay. and then we're like well maybe we can get some botox and some other things and what give her, were the other things like fill it like give her a good rate Great, and then okay, like yeah. and like get new faces yeah, okay yeah, of <laughs> okay you know hollywood shit of course. so then we like start reading her yelp reviews and they are fucked up she's dude. like filling people with no, cement no it's like i went in to get a size uh, B breasts. I left with double D's. No. This has been the worst day of my life. My no. life is completely ruined. Imagine you go no. to get B's and you come out with double D's. No. And then we're like. You can't just do that. You can't just pull whatever tits you want on you someone. You can't do that. Yeah, no, I know. So I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, so then we're like, yeah, She's I, like, think we're we're I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good on the ads. I think uh, we're not, we're, we found something else. Like we start like panicking. Cause I'm like, we're going to look like freak circus freaks. Also, here's my other question. If a plastic surgeon is looking for ads on a podcast, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta think how well are they really doing? <laughs> That's so true. It's so true. <laughs> so uh, that's so true. And there's <laughs> there's no such thing as a free plastic surgery. There's you no, know the rules. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> you shouldn't be getting discounts. No, that's like getting a Groupon yeah, situation. Yeah, you can't. And I've done that for you Botox. Got, you did. And unfortunately, I still go to that place because they <laughs> do have great deals. <laughs> we love a great deal. And whether or not it looks good, I go. I went to get Botox, and the lady fucked up my she made my eyebrow look evil mm. like spocked it you mm-hmm. know spock from, from star trek yeah was and she like i was like i looked very like 
I get it. Yeah. Aggressive in the face. How often are you getting Botox? Every like five months. Nice. About. Okay. But she really fucked it up. And then it was, you can't go back for retouches till two weeks after. Right. So I'm driving around looking all angry in the face. I'm calling them. I'm like, can I please come in? It's ruining my life. Every time I look in the mirror, Ruined. I look angry. Yeah. She's like, no, it's got to be two weeks. And then I went in to have her fix it. And then she tried to charge me to fix it. I was like, no, Absolutely I didn't not. ask you to make me look satanic. They, they look great. What, what's well, going now on now? It's a different purse. I went, I never went back there again. How long ago was that? Summer. Really? Yeah. Hmm. You know when me. it's your face? You, you notice. You notice. You do notice. You, Nobody <laughs> else does. There are certain things that you, even just I notice like on my body. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially like the older I get. I'm like, why do I have that vein right there? What, yeah, what's going on there? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I spend so much time looking at myself, thinking about myself is, every day. Do you think all comedians are like that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think <laughs> or so. Or women. Think maybe I think it's more of a woman thing. And I think it's more, I don't know. And I don't think all women are like that. I think it's a special type of uh, Los Angeles woman. That's an LA woman constantly thinking about what they look like. Yeah. But to an extent, I do think that most women probably think about it. And sometimes I'm like, it's fine. At least I have a good personality. Yeah. Right. To fall back on. At least I've got, at least we've got it's like, I always think like if I give up and get super fat, yeah. people will just be like, she's funnier. Yeah. No, it's true though. <laughs> I know. There, I know there are pros and cons. Like there are things about okay, the difficult things about being a woman in comedy. Besides simply being a woman in comedy, and I'm so sorry we're talking about this. I hate talking about comedy. I really do. We don't have to. Um, we'll dabble. We'll we can zig. We can zag. Yeah, we can. But we'll, I'll close on this. I'll close okay. on, on my final thought is the difficulties of being like a you know a. This is going to sound so bad, and I'm going to regret saying this, but like being an conventionally attractive woman not to say beauty is all standards right, right, fuck, right. i would just say that don't fucking twist my arm you know if i ever get canceled everybody's beautiful we get it okay right? <laughs> okay but, yeah. but there's a difference between looking you're a conventionally attractive woman so it makes it a little bit more difficult to get on stage because immediately people look at you and they're like she's hot she's not gonna be she's funny gonna fuck my boyfriend and i don't want there's, that right there's that there's that right. my boyfriend's looking at her i don't like that exactly and then sometimes i do think though so like you're a little fucking dumpier looking you get it on stage and people are like yeah she's not a threat she's, she, just like she's a dumpy killing bitch. Yeah. yeah the dumpy bitch is yeah, killing old fucking, again old fucking dumper yeah yeah exactly it pays to be kind of dumpy yeah in comedy, in comedy. Yeah. yeah like give me a hoodie yeah. Give me a pair of leggings. Exactly. Give me a pair of dirty Converse. Yeah. If I wear that versus what I'm wearing now, oh, yeah. I'll crush harder. You don't wear makeup. You don't yeah. wear makeup. Go up you want people to be like, is she okay? I don't know, but she's funny. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that. When you look good, it's like, it makes it harder for people to think that you're going to be funny. Yes. I feel like you That's have to continually truth. prove yourself Always. as being funny. And do you feel the same way about hot guys? Sometimes when I see a hot kind of, guy. Yeah, I do. There's a few hot guys I go, Okay. There are a few. Right. <laughs> right. I rarely, uh, yeah. It's like the same thing. You're going to go on stage and make me laugh. But let's just talk about how there is also not a single hot man in comedy. <laughs> and let's also, we have to address that. I've never looked at a man on stage and been like, yeah. yeah. No, I look at them yeah. and I go, don't talk to me. We have the same personality don't, disorder. Don't. We have this, exactly. <laughs> Ew. I'm so grossed out by you. And then I've like only dated comics, but I still hate, I hate them. You know? I hate them too. And then I tell myself never again. Never again. I'm never doing it again. Yeah, Cause then again. you got to see them. Oh, you're yeah. seeing them in places. You're like, you're on uh, shows with them. Your bits are about them. They see you bomb. They, they see you bomb. You see them bomb. Yeah. Yeah. I also notice a lot of guys in comedy will bring like girls to their shows. Like it'll be like first can date. You imagine. <laughs> no. Can you fucking imagine? No. Because guys do that. Yeah. And and it's like a power move. And yes. girls are like, oh, he's so funny. It's so fucking I will hot. not bring my boyfriend. I have a new boyfriend. And okay. I, I've seen this. He's, let's, a new let's address. And, yeah, we will address. I tell him, I'm like, you are not allowed to come to a show for a long time. Okay. Because I do not. Like that to me. To me, bringing him to watch my stand up would be like watching him, like would would be like having him in the bathroom with me while I have active diarrhea. You know what I mean? It's like in the it's the same <laughs> feeling of like you can't see this right now. Yeah, it's not it's not for you. It's yet. not for you yet. That's interesting. I feel the same way though. Yeah. I would never bring him to a show to be like, want to come watch me talk about sucking dick? Like I'm not gonna do it. But also, but also like um Hold on, where was I going with this about bringing a guy? Okay, it also has to be the right dude. 
I remember dating, going on a few dates with the guy. He was kind of come to a show. I go, oh, hell no. I don't trust you in the green room. I don't know what weird shit you're going to say in the green room. See, that's so I, I don't, don't know what your etiquette is. That's true. And there is etiquette. And you're right. I'm afraid my thing of not bringing this guy around is just because I don't want him to see that side of me yet. Because it feels, there's something about it that also feels like super masculine. Yes, it's and that. And you're like, you're like, yeah. Anyways, keep it going for your host. Oh, yeah. And you're like, it's like, what's up, fuckers? Uh, yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> fucking come out, take my pussy out on stage. It's just, it's not, it's not ready for him yet. Right. And also, it's just, there's also the fear of like, what if I don't do well? And then he comes to see that. And then he sees me like not do well. I like don't want. To, yeah. To but you know, you know what I, I'll tell you? It's love when they see a bum and they're still there. Yeah, is it love? I I don't know. Or they're <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Or yeah, they just is settling? It love or is it desperation? Yeah, <laughs> there's no like, and, and I'm so <gasps> fucked up that there's no way that that can make sense in my head. I'm like, no, there's if he sees me bomb and he stays with me, there's that's something even wrong worse. with him. Yeah, that's even ugh. <laughs> yeah, have I? I remember dating a comic. He went on stage, bombed. He was opening, he bombed for a whole fucking week. By the end of the trip, I said, I can't. See, really? I've had enough, sweetie. You've had enough, sweetie. I've had enough. God. It was that, and he was making smoothies in the bathroom. God, I want to know who it is so bad, and I have a I'll feeling I know who uh, it is. You probably know who it is. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you when the cameras are off. But yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I, I was like, please stop making smoothies in the bathroom. It's freaking me the fuck out. Yeah. And is then, he neurotic? Um. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think I know exactly who it is. Yeah. yeah. It could be. It could be. It could be. Honestly, many people. <laughs> it actually, I'm like, is, it, is he neurotic? Actually, all male all, comedians. All are male comedians are neurotic. That's, as yeah. Fun. The ones I've dated are fucking nightmares. So. Yeah. yeah. It's also like when you. <clears throat> okay. Question. Yeah. Are you organized at home? Absolutely. The fuck not. Sometimes you make videos and they go, okay, I see she's got some stuff going on yeah, behind yeah, yeah. her. Got a lot of stuff Inspiring. Going on. Yeah. I said, she's just, she's just rolling she's with it. it up there. I'm out and driving in my car like, oh, fucking away. I want to see what's happening in here. Bad, bad news. Bad, bad news. A lot of water bottles. A lot of water bottles. In fact, I texted my boyfriend that today. I said that my car is filled with water bottles. I didn't say that exactly, but I was, we were talking about water bottles. Uh-huh. Covering the floors of our cars. Not his, mine. This is clean. Mine looks like a recycling truck. Mine does too. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. I, uh, the other day, last week, actually, my car started getting this weird smell and I was like, what is going no, on No, no, I'm scared. Like, okay. <laughs> There's no food. I didn't leave any food in here. It starts getting worse and worse. A couple days go by. I realized a smoothie had oh. spilled on the back and it was growing culture no no you had a science experiment in the back seat there were were villages no no water it was the whole thing and i was like no that's what's going on oh yeah have you ever okay this is this throws me off sometimes you spill water in your car and for some reason it smells bad yeah it's like what's going on there what is going is this water like the way it's like mildewy yeah. and then like it's not fresh. One time this yeah. haunts me. And I I, I, I I thought about this so much that I wonder now if I actually just made this up. Cause I'm like, how did this actually happen? But I like left a water bottle in my car for a little while and I came back to it, I don't know, weeks, months later. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and there were like things i mean like alive things in it i'm talking something swimming like no worms no something no, was alive Gabby, no i know. I know water bottle yeah something there something grew in there no no sea no. monkeys i don't know no, what it was but no then, see not sea monkeys sea monkeys wa- i know and i thought now what went on here for this to happen <laughs> what <laughs> simply happened in here what happened in there and i I really, at this point, I'm like, did I actually make that up? Because it's so disgusting. But I- Cultures in the water? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it really did happen. That's horrible. It is horrible. Thank you. You're all, you're so welcome. Uh, this is One a safe space to talk about, yeah. about your water cultures. Um, I did date a guy. I went on two dates with this guy. I told him I wanted sea monkeys. Yeah. I, I mentioned it casually. How old were you? This was not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> It would have been better if I was like sixteen. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, mm, no, because no, I like so cool. 
<laughs> because I never. Okay, do you remember like on the back of like highlights magazines? They'd be yeah. like sea monkeys. I never, I never experienced them because my mom was like, "We're not getting those." And yeah, because they're like they're not real, anyways. and they're like, like a responsibility, that? and it's right. like water and like what's happening. Yeah, this guy bring this guy second date brings me the sea monkeys. No, I think I do hate that. <laughs> That he brought me sea monkeys. I think I hate that. And I was like, you took it too far, right? You did. Second date? A second date, sea a monkeys. Lot. He brings me sea monkeys. Not only does he bring me sea monkeys, he drops I love you. Oh. Second date with the sea monkeys. And I go, I'm, I'm second, never. Second time meeting him in your life? Second time hanging out. He brings me sea monkeys, says I love you. I say, I'm not making these sea monkeys with you. No, I you put them in the back of my car. I'm pretty sure I have a box of sea monkeys in my car still now. Yeah, you probably do. So what happened after that? Nothing. He said, I love you. I said, you don't even know me. There's How something wrong. Him? Comedy, baby. Of course. What? <laughs> Why else? Is How else? a comedian? Unfortunately. Do you see him around? No. That's one of my favorite, favorite mistakes. Cause I don't have to, I don't have to relive as it. As soon as we're off. I cannot wait to hear who this was. Is you there, might not I know him. Okay. You might not know him. Cause he's not really around very much, Got but it. I met him from doing a podcast one time. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, sea monkeys, second date. He said, I love you. He said, I love you. And then he kept, he kept, he was a single dad. He kept trying to get me to redecorate his house. I was like, too soon. This is, I, I don't Whoa. know how to redecorate your house. And he got me sea monkeys. He said, I love you. I was like, he's How like, did he say I love you? Did you fuck? Yeah, we fucked. And he oh, goes, yeah. I love you. And I was like, what? And then he goes, yeah. he goes, I'm not looking for a stepmom, but I'm also not, not looking for a stepmom really a lot for us <laughs> i know do you think you could be a stepmom all i'll say is that i'm really glad that my boyfriend doesn't have kids i feel that i would not want uh, but you know m maybe if he it would depend on the kind of dad it, that he was it would depend on the dad i just for me it's more like oh, like the no. baby mama and i gotta worry about the baby right. mama is now you ideal? guys are coordinating is it ideal no and the older i get the more i'm like there's a chance i uh, yeah it's it would be a lot i don't think i would be because you can't really yell at choice. them yeah because it's not your it's a you little... can't give them secondhand trauma when they're not even yours exactly it's a lot i it's don't know i don't think i it is a lot yeah it is a lot what about having kids in general? Yeah. A lot? No? Yes? Uh, don't know. Yes. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, here's my stance on kids. Would I love to have one? One, yes. One, same. Would I love to have one cap it there? Absolutely. Now, do I see how that could be possible given exactly who I am and where I'm at right now in my life? <laughs> Absolutely not. But it's fucked because, you know, like I'm going to be 32 in August, mm -hmm. only getting older. Things are, you know, for us, our careers, like, especially for women, like our careers start fucking. Um, if something happens with my career, it'll happen within the next five. When I'm 40. Six. Exactly. And my eggs are dried out. Exactly. Like things are going to pop when I'm fucking 40. So I what know. Are we... it's, it feels unfair. Exactly. So by the time I'm ready, I'm going to, my career is just going to be taking off. And then it's just a fuck. It's hard. I don't know. See, I'm thinking, okay, here's my plan. Are you going to freeze your eggs? Some days I'm like, I'm freezing them tomorrow. Other days I'm like, if I got $10,000, I don't know if that'd be the first thing on my list. It's so much money. <laughs> it's like, See, that's the thing. You know what I mean? Yes. I like clothes a lot. See, $10,000 is so you'd like. I want to go to Europe. Yeah. Sue me. I want to have a croissant on a cobblestone path. And you should okay? be able to do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm also now I'm leaning towards just like outsourcing the work. In my in my fantasy, when I have millions of dollars, I pay a surrogate. Which not a bad choice. Not a bad choice. Although, see, I kind of want to experience pregnancy. Ugh. See, I know I'd be a goddamn nightmare. You think? I, I, I would like to experience it. I'd like to see my tits get fat. Oh, you're I'd doing like, it for the fat tits. I'm doing it for the fat tits and the glowings. Because, you know, pregnant women, everybody's like, you're glowing, you're glowing. Like, I'm doing it purely for vanity. Right. I'm doing it Keep for the maternity shoot. Yes. 
fuck the kids. Yes, the maternity Give shoot. me like a cute bump. Yes. I'm thinking glam hair and makeup. Glam. Eric, you're She's doing feminine. extensions. She, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely needs to be extensions. Yes. Like loose curls. Like I'm imagining my hair over my breasts. There's a, a lamb. A little, <laughs> yeah. There's a lamb. Yeah, there's butterflies. Uh, yeah. yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. I want the maternity shoot. And then as soon as you give birth, give it away. But for the <laughs> shoot, yes. yes. Give it to the nanny. Also, just like get also the thought of having a fake bump for a fake maternity shoot. Not me becoming a fake mommy influencer. So, how about this? <laughs> yeah. You have the fake, you do all of the fakes, you know, you do fake pregnancy, but meanwhile, you have, have your someone surrogate. else cooking it. Yes. But you can, yeah. There we go. It's actually kind of genius. Yeah. You could say it is. <laughs> I have fake tits and fake bump. Fuck the tits do so. I, I um I was in the process of donating my eggs right. Before I remember. The, yes, right before the pandemic happened. But you then, didn't go through with it. No, because did everything they didn't shut down. want you. I don't know. I got an email last week that was like, "Hey, we found a family for you," and I was like, "Oh, knock knock." Three years fucking later, where have you guys been? So are you gonna donate your eggs? I, they haven't written me back, but I was like, "I'm here if you wanna fucking go through. I can use the money." <laughs> so I'm waiting. They're taking a real long time. And I'm like, I'm not getting any fucking younger. You guys wanted this to happen before. Because they want you to be under 30. I'm pushing 32 now. I'm like, you it's guys like, Let's go. You let's, guys let's, sleeping on my eggs. Sleeping on my fucking... They're just getting looser and looser, you know? <laughs> Losing Dryer. them every month. Yeah. Hurry up. Dude, the thought of... Also, sometimes I'll be like driving. And I'll be like, I really don't want to go through menopause ever. Oh, God. Right? Everything's like... I don't ever think about menopause. I See, um, now that's where I'm at. I'm like, I want to be fresh and do it. woman is, is hell. It's, it's hell. hell. We were, it's hell. We bleed out of our vaginas. It's horrible. I'm, I'm on my period right now. Same. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> um, Whoa. Do, is the computer working? Yeah, the computer. Have you seen the Julia Fox thing? No. The Julia Fox. I mean, I always see like tidbits home, of her. Home tour. Can we get the Julia Fox home tour? Is it chaotic? It's so chaotic. It'll make you feel so much better. She's so chaotic. Is her, are her eyebrows bleached? Yes. She's so, this woman is pure chaos. Is it the top one right uh, It's the one underneath. Uh, well, I don't know what that one. That one is like the, yeah. This is it. Okay, wait. Show this this the, popped up on my TikTok and I scrolled past it. Okay. Okay, hold on. Let me get the remote. See, what I love about Julia Fox, she makes me feel so much better. Now, is it because she's so unhinged? And S- yeah, wait. Wait till you see her house tour. Just wait. It's, it looks humble. It's beyond humble, sweetie. Whoa. Okay, wait. Can we start from the beginning? Yeah, for sure. This, this is, she's a mother. She's out here putting her shit. Where does she live? New York. She got her lips done. She got a lot done. What? It's a cute name. Not me judging Julia Fox. Same. <laughs> Excessive displays of love. <laughs> yeah. She's just saying that because she doesn't have any money. I know. <laughs> She's like, I don't. Mice. She's lying. No, There's she, no way. Yeah. She also does live in New York, so I'm not surprised. That was, well, that's no, really her place. That was really her place, but there was also a part where she was showing her cremated friends by the window. Interesting. She's like, and that's my sister Brianna. Her sister's and dad. It was like one of her. I don't know her friends. Mm. It was. It was interesting. It was bizarro. It is bizarro. She's bizarro to me. That I feel like that's. I'm like that has got to be fake. That's just trying to. She's just trying she's to trying get, to get likes. Yeah. yeah. What is she though? Also, what does she do? 
Like who is Uncut Gems? Is she an actress? She was in Uncut Gems, and that's it. Uncut Gems. Um, do, do you remember? Did you see Uncut Gems? Yeah, but who was she in it? She was like the one that was like hooking up with Adam Sandler. Mm, don't remember. That that movie gave me fucking anxiety. I know, the entire movie, time yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I needed to be medicated to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. So how'd you meet your boyfriend? Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh hell yeah! When two addicts find love, we love it. And it's and it happens so fast, and that's it. It's just, it's uh, it happens quick. You know, two fucking people who have addiction meet each other, and they're like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. How long? When did you guys meet? We met January. Th- I was in San Luis Obispo, third. I believe. Does he live in San Luis Obispo? No, he lives in LA, but I was in San Luis Obispo when we started talking because a mutual friend set us up. And I had shows there over the weekend. Oh, we started shit. texting and then we went on a date the, the day I got back. And then you're like, the, we're in a relationship. By the second day. We, we, we went out on one date and we were like, this is cool. And then by the second date, we were both just like, should we just be in a relationship? See, I like that. I actually really like it. I too. like it. It's a taking a chance. It is chaotic. Um, but it was it's <laughs> but it's also it was one of those things where I was like, oh, well, this already I don't know. Some I guess if you know, you know. You know, it just felt like, oh, this feels good. And we both seem to like like each other. Like each other a lot. And there was like not a single chance for a game to be played. And he was we just love like, that. I we know. love a king who doesn't play a game. Didn't play a damn game. And he was just like, I like you. I'm fucking down to date you. And I was like, yeah, I like you too. I'm down to date you. I was like, isn't it crazy? We don't know each other. And he's like, yeah, who cares? And I was like, yeah, who cares? And that's love. Kind of. And kinda that's on love. Be. And it could be kind of It could. Love. It could maybe be on love. It could be on love. We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. I definitely feel like I, I like love him. But you know, like, you, you, know, you know, you love people. You're like, I love that person. So we'll right. see. We'll see how... I'm ex- One time I accidentally said I love you first. Not not my power. Not my. I wasn't proud about it. It slipped out it slipped. like Tourette's. Yeah. I go love you, and he goes what? I go I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm feeling crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I do want to say it because I want. I just want to, but we'll. I'll wait. I'm gonna give it some. I'm gonna wait. We waited. It- we waited like two weeks to fuck, which is in this day and age. <laughs> That's. Not nothing. That's not. We got into a relationship before we had sex. Whoa. He asked me to be his girlfriend and I was like, got away to a couple weeks to fuck. And he was like, okay. And then like four days later we had sex. Wait. Okay. Cause I dated a guy who didn't, who wanted to, who, who didn't want to have sex until we were in a relationship. And I said, a fucking pussy. Dude. I said, I need to know. I need to test the goods. I can't be. I can't, we can't be in a relationship. We fuck and then I break up with you See, because the dick wasn't good. That's what was scary. I got so into it. scary. Yes. And I got into it and I was like, his dick could suck. This could suck, but I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to roll the dice. I'm going to roll him. And much to my surprise, he did not disappoint. That's awesome. Like, yeah, great. Well, you know. I got in a relationship with this guy <laughs> who, this was like a two week relationship. Yeah. I think I've talked about this on other podcasts. I don't know if I've talked about it on my podcast. And uh, everything was fine. We're in a relation. We become boyfriend, girlfriend. We're on a road trip. The second after we become boyfriend, girlfriend, he's honking my tits. You mean honking your tits? He's going like this yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I go, okay, here's the thing. <laughs> I know that like, you're my boyfriend and like you think that that means you can just honk my titties whenever you want. But unfortunately, that's not how this is going to work for me. Yeah, you have boundaries. And I, go, yeah. I go, also like, you know, right before your period, your boobs hurt. Yeah, they get juicy and they hurt. They're juicy. He's honking my juicy titties. Yeah. I'm about to bleed. How could you? But OK, in his defense, how could he not honk your juicy titties? <laughs> no, because it was all the time. It was like it was gross. It was like he's driving and honking my tits. Like, can you focus on the road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to die because you got your tits on your my tits. tits. My, your hands on my tits. His tits it's on, on your my tits. tits. You know what I meant. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah. Okay. And it was like it, that I had to break up with him because I was like, I can't have this titty honker as my boyfriend. Yeah, it was, it was not. He thought that just because we're in a relationship, he could free honk, and I'm like, that's not what's happening. And it was it happened fast too. It happened fast. Yeah. We took too many vacations too fast. Too. Really? A vacation too soon? Whew! Too much. 
Yes, I started feeling trapped. Yeah, I was like sweating really? and feeling trapped. Really? He took me to like a really nice hotel and I was like, okay, not bad. But then he was honking my tits the whole time so at the I, montage. He, he was addicted and to get, honking your tits. He was addicted to honking my tits and he thought that taking me to like a nice hotel would make up for it. And I'm like, Here, here's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> here's the thing. I need you to stop honking my tits. Yeah. You were at the Four Seasons. You yeah. gotta stop honking We're at them. the fucking montage. I just saw Elon Musk. Stop honking my titties. Yeah. Did you see Elon Musk? Yes. Whoa. And I just remember being like, I feel like one of those like, um, like rich, unhappy housewives. Yeah, all right. And you were like two. Weeks <laughs> and it was in. like two weeks in. I was like, I should technically be happy to be like at this really nice resort with this guy who's like my boyfriend. But the whole time, I just wanted to get away from him, and he wouldn't stop punking my titties. It's so why is why relationships so hard? That's the other thing. Is like I have this fear too. I'm like, okay, this is great right now, but like, is it you know in a few months going to wear off? Like in a couple like. When does that, does that always have to happen? No, it doesn't have to happen. It's hard to stay present within the relationship if you're always for fear of it going away. That's, and I've been really trying to practice being present. I'm like, just fucking enjoy it. Like we're both sober. We both can like talk through this shit and we do. Well, that's really cool Yeah, because that is one thing. I love an addict. I've dated a lot of addicts. Ugh. My favorite. I'm like, oh, you're in a 12 step. Let me suck your dick. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and that is the one thing that I really like is that there is transparency in terms of like so feeling much. and like self-awareness. We There's talk a, a self-awareness because if you're doing the steps, then you have to be self-aware to some degree. Which I love. And he's very sober. He's very good. We talk a lot about our mode. We're always talking things through. And then I'm like, wait, is there like a, to a point where this is like unhealthy? Like, should we be talking this much about how we feel all the time? It's so good. I think that's so good. I think that's what you're supposed to I do. I think so. I think I'm a little bit still too mentally ill. So right. everything seems a little too, you know, I'm always kind of Everything's like a for, threat. You're like, everything's I don't a know. I don't know what could happen. Absolutely. What is that? I get like that too. I don't know what it is. I, d I have no idea it's what like, it what is. If this, what if this gets boring? And what if he doesn't have anything yes. to talk to me about what one he, day? Yes. What if... What if he, um, like I change my mind? Yeah. What if he changes his mind? What, what all if? Of it. And he's just like, no, I'm down. I'm like, yeah, what, but if, what if you're not? What if you don't think I'm funny? What if we don't laugh in a couple of months? What happens? What happens? Here's the thing. <laughs> what happens? Here's the thing, though. And tell me if you feel this way. Okay. Does it ever bring you joy to think about of all the men that you've dated, you're probably the funniest woman that he, they've ever dated? So much joy. So much, right? So I'm like I'm like guys aren't dating comedians and they're the most probably part. like how okay no I did I went out with a girl one girl one time it's giving bisexual it's icon. giving bisexual icon yeah we're out we're having we're having dinner and she said the hardest part about dating women versus men is that um women like not as good at carrying the conversation like that's her biggest complaint. She said like, they're more shy. They're like less likely, like no personality. Whoa. And I was like, damn. Cause I'm around some quirky personality bitches 24 seven. All the time. So, so I don't even know what that would be but like. That's true because a lot of men, cause okay. Then you think about like men do date a lot of women like that boring. are like lacking in personality. But hot. But hot. Like, I don't know. Do you want to split the art and choke up? Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a salad. I love traveling and <laughs> hiking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I do. There is, I. I and that was eye opening for me because that's not even something that I even considered. Because. Yeah. Most of the people I hang out with are fucking crazy. Are crazy. Yeah. And fun. Every, and like, all of my friends, everybody I'm surrounded by is so fun. Is a comedian or an addict or both. Yeah. And all of those this personality traits so fun. are so fun. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. wild. Yeah. Wild. So, but like, most men don't date that. They date very like regular women. And I can't imagine like I could see myself getting really bored being on a date with a woman who was boring. I mean, you could. I mean, like, that happens with men too. You get bored oh, of anybody who's boring. The men, the a boring man. Don't because okay. At least if it's a boring woman, you like have <laughs> you're it, like you're you so have it in <laughs> Yeah, or you can have it in common to like be a woman. You're like, well, okay. At least I like understand. I can like understand you on like a deeper level because we're both women. Mm -hmm. But with a boring man, I'm just like, come on. Like I don't work. <laughs> you're giving me nothing. You know, <gasps> a boring man who loves sports. A boy, and that then that's their whole fucking personality. It's Sunday. You know what that means. I'm not available. 
I and actually dated. I, I actually dated a guy who every Sunday loved football and was kind of nice for a while because I was like, I get a break on Sunday. Yeah. That's my that's mommy self care. That, that is that nice. is. I'm I'm getting a massage. Sure, watch seven games. But then they want to talk to you about the fight, and, and you're like, I have to pretend that you. Oh yeah, did he scored his touchdown? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, your team lost. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. You okay? <laughs> it's like, can you take off the jersey? Come on, take off the jersey, honey. Take off the fucking jersey, you fucking coward. <laughs> yeah. You fucking incel What coward. about like, I, I dated a guy who was in seven fantasy football leagues. I was like, first of all, you're not a general manager. I would, second um, of all. Kill myself. If he, I was dating that guy, I would He was myself. like, he's like, oh, he's, I'm just so stressed out. My fantasy teams are just, oh. Babe, what? Calm down. It's okay. You'll, you'll win next time. You'll, be, I, you'll the, win. The- <laughs> What are you supposed to say to that? You'll win. He <laughs> thinks he's a part of the team. He does. He thinks, he thinks he's a part of the fucking team. We'll get him next week, babe. Babe, I know <laughs> I know you're so dedicated to like your boys and your team. <sighs> Honey, did you want more bean dip? I made you bean dip because it's game night. Do you want beers? <laughs> Do you want me to bring you some ice cold beers? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that sounds like hell. Hell. But then, like, there are women who date these kinds of men, and they have to convince themselves that they're okay with it. They're like, "I love that my man is in a fantasy football. I think it's I made so him. Cool. I brought him wings. <laughs> I brought him wings. Okay, so you want to know what else you're bringing him? Fucking butthole cancer, because wings give you like weird butthole cancer. We- wings, the sauce, probably. What is it? What do men get? What's the prostate? Butthole? Prostate cancer. I can see. Hey, that. honey, you're giving him prostate cancer. So keep feeding him those carcinogens. <laughs> keep feeding him. Keep stuffing him full of carcinogens. She sips her chlorophyll water. <laughs> keep and, giving him the Red Bull. <laughs> they this balance, gonna, yeah, yeah, they they balance each other out. This is going to give me fucking butthole cancer. The, Mark my words. I'll be right there with you, sweetie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Colon. Well, we won't won't have colons, but it won't matter. But we'll still be matter. able to make jokes. And that, isn't that true? At the end it, of the day, at least we can make jokes about our colons. Yeah, because you know who can't do that? That guy, the fantasy football guy. Fan- he, there's no way that he's funny, and you know that. There's no way. Lots of men not funny. Lots of men. An unfunny man. Lots I of like men I like funny. a man who's like fun and playful. My boyfriend is so fun and playful. So I'm like, okay, thank God. And like, he's not a comedian, but he's fun and funny. playful. He's so cute. That's even better. Yeah. Someone who doesn't have to hinge their entire life on making jokes. Oh God, I know. And you're like, you're just naturally funny and cool. Yeah, you're just actually naturally funny and sweet and cool. Like, good. Thank it's God. It's a gift. Thank God. It's a, yeah. it's a fucking gift. It's a fucking gift. You don't have to try like I do all day long. Ugh. You don't have to base your entire personality off of. The worst is when someone doesn't turn it off. You're like, please, we're at the grocery store. I have to be careful of that. I feel like you're normal, though. I feel like I because we're having one. a normal conversation. That is, but we are. I, like, but you're you just you still have personality. It's not like you're like doing voices and doing like bits the whole time. Yeah, act outs. <laughs> Imagine act outs. On- <laughs> Imagine doing act outs. What would that even look like? What would an it- act out in the grocery store? You're looking for. You're looking at cereals, right? Right. Yeah. Oatmeal got me going like this. <laughs> and it's like, just like this whole like crazy moment. Gotta make sure I get my oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like He stuff. takes the bananas and he's like pretending to shove them up his yeah, ass. Yeah, like that type of stuff. That's something I would do. Yeah, but you're funny. I feel like you could make it work. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I put it next to his dick. I'm like, look, I could fit the whole thing down my mouth. And he's like, please, we're in Trader Joe's. Please. Trader jo- bits in Trader Joe's mm. nightmare. <laughs> it's like, nice. You're right. I'm sorry. Where are the pre-made salad? It's a fight. You're right. It is I gotta salad. get it inside my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> like that type of shit. Too. How far. many men have you dated? A lot of unfunny men. Yes. Yeah, me too. Almost all of them. The yeah. fuck's up with that? It's what are we doing? Not an un- an unfunny man will make me dry as fuck. Dry as fuck. I'm sorry, so dry. Yeah. My body doesn't even want to be here at all. Mm-mm. You can be incredibly hot, and if you're not funny, it's gotta go. Or interesting. Yeah. Like read a fucking book if you're not funny. Read a and then book. tell right. me something. But yeah, debate like, me. Have like let's have like let's a, have an intellectual exchange. Yes. But here's the thing: if you are a little bit smart, there's a chance that you probably have a good sense of humor. 
That's well, maybe true. not in all cases. Well, nothing worse than someone who's a little too smart. It's like, you're book smart, but your social skills are fucking off. What would you rather have? Somebody who is, like, incredibly intellectual, not very funny, but, like, can have a fucking conversation you know they're right. they're talking they're talking astrophysics they're t- i don't know what the smart people talk about the thought is talking astrophysics is a no for me <laughs> see that also very dry yeah. thinking about oh really oh tell me more about astrophysics <laughs> you're getting dry <laughs> you're getting dry about that yeah I but if it's someone who's like emotionally intelligent okay emotionally intelligent i mean that yeah someone has good insight about like the inner workings of humans i do love that someone who's like creative yeah. i like that but maybe they're not funny but they're creative yeah that is hot that, that is it, extremely hot and they're really good at what they do yeah that's hot um that is very hot my, so my boyfriend i keep talking about him i'm so excited it's a new relationship so i was just like my boyfriend my boyfriend my boyfriend i let i match but with a doctor on an app now and i sat with them no, and then he, when he messaged me, he said, hey, pumpkin. I don't know. See, a oh, doctor calling me pumpkin. Doctor. It's such a doctor thing to say. say hey, pumpkin. Hey, pumpkin. That's my best Oh, <laughs> both of our phones. We both check our phones at the same time. Let me see what time it is. Okay. We have to move our cars at three. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to wrap this little pot up. Um, yeah. And it was a fun one, let me tell you. It was a fun one. What kind, do you know what kind of doctor he was? I think he was an orthopedist. I know. I said, could I look past the pumpkin? Could you maybe? No. Okay. Money. His face was the face of a man who would say pumpkin. Yeah. Was was it like mousy and white? Yes. Yeah. Mousy and white. Mousy and white. Yeah. Orthopedic surgeon. Orthopedic. My grandpa was an orthopedic surgeon and that guy was a fucking nightmare. Really? (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I just think. I don't know. I was like, a doctor sounds cool. Like, cause their perspective on life is like, okay, I'm keeping people alive. Like that seems yeah. more like you're adding more value to society. Maybe that's their perspective. Maybe some of them, I don't know if all doctors them really like, feel that they way. They have a Messiah complex. They're like, yeah. oh, I can do anything. I, I, yeah. oh, I save lives. Or they're just good at it. So they like know what to do, but they're not really in it for like compassionate reasons. They're in it for the money. Yeah. Cause they just can do it. What about like an evil doctor? There's so many of them. Didn't you see our father? No. You didn't see our father? No. Did it's you? Ne- oh, it's so good. Um, it's a Netflix documentary and it's about this guy. I believe he was he was a gynecologist. Oh. And he was using his sperm to impregnate all of these women who were going in he was like helping women get pregnant with their partners, but he was switching out their sperm for his. I wanna watch this. It, you gotta watch it. How Our fucked father. up would it be if you had your doctor's baby? And, and you're like, you this, don't know. And then you don't find like, out. It's just until, like my husband. Yeah. And all of these <laughs> people started growing up and they're like, I don't look anything like my siblings. Who, are the, who the fuck do I look like? What's going on? And all these people start linking together, like linking that they're all related because this fucking doctor was impregnating. Okay, I'm, I'm watching this shit. Our father. Tonight. So good. Tonight. Yeah, you got to fucking watch it. Any new tattoos? Probably. Did I get one recently? You're, you're gonna run a space gap. I have so much left. I have so much you space left. My whole fucking back. You see, you see spaces. So, oh yeah, and I you're like so many. And when you see a space, do you feel like I can't wait to fill it? Absolutely. It's just, do I want to sit through the pain? Not really. Right I now, I don't feel like sitting through the pain. It's painful. I got this one was the biggest one I got. It hurt so bad. And then let me tell you. Oh wait, I, you covered your. Let me my see. My eight one eight. You covered it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah, that's it. That's a spot. Um, it hurts so bad. Yeah. And then also, they don't tell you about this. It smelled weird hmm. afterward. Yeah, they smell a little icky. I also, Google you, it. I'm like, does it smell? It's supposed to smell weird. Like, you may notice that your tattoo smells like a wet dog. Yeah, I they go, smell kind of bad. I go, smells like a wet dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at least it's doing, at least I'm not the only one. No, with a, you're not. But I didn't, I didn't like it because this was like the biggest one and I could like, get a whiff of it I and like, it's also Whoa. a lot of ink there so you're probably it probably took a second to heal you're like yeah. knocking it on everything yeah. yeah yeah i'm fucking i know i've so i need to get the rest of my back done it's just like are you covering frida no 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 Never. i won't cover th- frida but i have like the whole lower my whole lower back all the back of my legs i have to do my thighs all of it and i'm just like it's just gonna be so much money it's and so much time so much money and so much pain and you're there for hours you know like that's a fucking four to six hour day yeah depending on what you get depending on if you have to go back and, and it just fucking like, hurts and it 
fucking hurt especially if they're big or dark yeah and a lot and with the spaces that i have i like need to get some big ones to fill them and i'm just like i can't commit right now i get that it's just so painful i get that <sighs> but your collection's looking good collection's looking good stoked on the collection she's not a mural sweetie. On, uh, she's a mural yeah not stoked on the pain mm-hmm. or the money I mean, there's thousands of dollars. It's I just don't have that. During the pandemic, I had all that fucking unemployment money. So I was like, here we go. Oh, and the unemployment money. I was like, okay, I'll buy a pink Western dress. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Thanks, like, Daddy Trump. Yeah. Thanks, Daddy. Bring him back, honestly, because I, <laughs> I, was, I like, was making money. I was making paper. Girl. I was like, fuck comedy. Yeah. I'll sit in my fucking room. I'll sit in my fucking room and order a bunch of things online. Fast fashion. <laughs> Obsessed. I, I spent a lot of money on Fashion Nova that I never wore. I remember buying all these things online during the pandemic and I was like, can't wait to wear these out and then, one day. <laughs> and then I did too. And then I never wore them out. I did that too. Do you get rid of clothes a lot? Never. And Do you have I so should. many clothes? So many clothes. I have so many clothes. But then I go, I have nothing to wear. It's yeah. like, bitch, look in your fucking closet. Uh, now I'm always. trying to be like, okay, you have stuff. Get creative. Get creative, it. yeah. Put a different shirt with some different Yeah, ways. And I have everything, but I just, I look at myself, I'm like, that's too much. I can't figure it out. And then I go shopping and I buy more stuff and then it just gets buried. I know. And then I do this, I'm, in, I'm doing this thing lately. It's mentally ill as fuck. I go, yeah. I go, all right. I don't, I just need more space in my room. So let's just put the stuff that I haven't worn in a while into a bag. We don't have to get rid of the bag. Yeah. We'll move the bag into another room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That way, I'm not looking at it. No, you're not looking at it. Because this is what's mentally ill. If I yeah. get rid of the thing, six months later, I'm driving. I go, oh, I should have kept that fucking skirt. Yes. Yeah. Why the fuck did I get rid of that skirt? That skirt would have been perfect for would've me. Would have been perfect. Yeah. I, I do it all the time. That's why I don't get rid of anything. Otherwise, like, I wouldn't have touched it. Yeah. I have now it's gone and I'm thinking about it. It's mm-hmm. like dating. It is like dating. I have thing. I have like four things that I wear. Yeah, four things at all times. But I just keep rotate rotating. Yeah, and like, but then I need. Then I'm like afraid to get rid of things, and I'm like, I haven't worn this in four years. What am I doing? I know. Same. I have a pink cowboy shirt. I go one day. One day, this is gonna make sense. This is gonna make sense. Why do we do? I this? also have the fantasy of sooner rather than later oh yeah come on manifestation gods um of having a very large walk-in closet yeah and then my life getting easier it will get easier when you have that walk-in closet (laughs) you can see everything when i have the walk-in closet yeah things are gonna be different and i fucking completely am there with you oh shoes i got shoes in my car do you have a lot of stuff in your car The pause tells me <laughs> she's not okay. <laughs> I opened my trunk today and I said, please just nothing fall out. You know what I mean? It's yeah. stuffed to the point where I open it and things tumble out. And I go, I don't love that. I don't love that either. Bags of stuff. Bags. Same. I, I think they're supposed to go to the Goodwill, but I forgot. They've been in there for so long. I don't know what they're, they're doing tell you, in there. Some t- that happens to me too. I get the bag in the car. I go, Goodwill. I had to keep, I had bought a piano on a whim. I think we've talked about this probably. Yeah. A keyboard, got rid of it. Yeah. Then I go, I got to get rid of the keyboard stand that's still in the box that I never, got, that I never yeah. opened. Yeah. So I'm driving around with a keyboard stand in my car for the last six months. Six last months. Week, last week I dropped it off. I go, wow. I can't believe it took me six months. Six it months. took two seconds to do the drop off. Two seconds. Kooky. I could, you know, <laughs> kooky. It's so kooky. I could leave this podcast, go to Good. Goodwill. I could take those seven bags that have and been sitting in the back of my truck. I could just drop them off and they're done. But you want to know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> why? Don't know. Why would I? Because why, why would I? Would why I? would I do something that's going to make my life, life easier. easier? Why would I do that? I don't know. I, I want to drive way. around and just know that there's something crowding space in my <laughs> like, life. Because if there's nothing wrong, what do I have? You know what I mean? If there's not something burning in the back of my, my head, head like, I'm fucking... What else is there? What else is there? <laughs> what am I going to be happy? No. I want to always know that there's something just a little yeah. bit like... Off. Yeah. Yeah. It's not my fault. The bags, they're weighing me down. Like, it's not my fault. It's not my fault I have too many clothes. Yeah. That they're sitting in my car rotting. <laughs> I could probably be donated to some people in need. No, they oh, need yeah. to sit in my car and collect fucking mildew. Well, I have like six pairs of heels in my car right now. Yeah, you do. Of course you do. I go, you don't know. You yeah. don't know if I'm going to be out. I need a quick costume change. And you don't know. And sometimes, yeah. let me tell you, it comes in handy. And but Okay, but here's the other fucked up thing it's is that very sometimes rarely. it does. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does, but it's very rare. It's once every six months, but <laughs> yeah. it's there when you need it. You got to have a towel back there. I don't know what it's for, but if you got want to go to the beach, I could. Go, you could. You could. Could take a dip. 
When was the last time you went to the beach? Probably not a long time ago. Long time ago. But if you have, if you're on a whim, yeah. I'm I'm in the I'm in the ocean suddenly. Yeah. Thanks to the towel in my Thanks car. Thanks to the towel that you've kept there conveniently for twelve months. All right, that's our podcast. I love that. Where can people find you? Do you have anything you want to promote? This is coming out on Wednesday. Like this Wednesday? Yeah. Um, where am I gonna be? Um, you can follow my social media. It's probably all shadow banned, so if you can find it, Gabby, I'll Lammy. link to it in the description of the love. episode, so it'll be really easy for people to find you. Got it. G A B B Y L A M B Y. Okay, I'll have to type in the full thing because I don't think my account comes up anymore. And then your pod, podcast called Tea Time, which looks super fun. Every time I see the clips, it's really it's funny. a fun podcast. It is. You should do it. Oh, I would love to. When does it come out? Every it comes out every Sunday. Fun. Um, we come new episodes every Sunday. It's uh, tea time with Harper Rose Drummond and Gabby Lamb, and um, that's where people send in their anonymous stories, and we read them on the podcast, and it's a good time. And it's funny. It's fun. Every yeah. time I see a clip, I go, "It's funny." Yeah, we have Bobby Lee on tomorrow. That should be fun. That's gonna be amazing. Be, uh, yeah, so that'll be a fun He's one. He's the best. Yeah, he is. He's, You're gonna have so much fun with Bobby. I'm excited for that's Bobby. That's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Should be cute. Cool. I yeah. Hell yeah. And that's it. That's where you find us. Cool. Well, thank you for coming on. And thank you guys for listening to another episode of Shank. We'll see you next week. See you next time. Bye.